my name is Siddesh Chavan and I am Technical Account Manager here at AWS office in Northern Virginia. Today, I am going to demonstrate how to troubleshoot the issue where your public website that is hosted on your Amazon Elastic Cloud Compute instance is unresponsive. So let's get started. A website hosted on EC2 instance can be unreachable for several reasons. Following are some of the common steps to troubleshoot this scenario. First, log into the EC2 console and check systems and instance level health checks of EC2 instance. Make sure that both the health checks are passing. So as you can see, this is my Amazon EC2 instance on which my public website is hosted. So I'm going to update my Elastic IP address on the web browser and see if my website is reachable or not. As you can see, currently the website is not reachable. So let's log in into EC2 console and check system and instance level health check of EC2 instance and make sure that both the health checks are passing. So click on the status check tab and as you can see, both the system reachability checks and the instance reachability checks, both the health checks are passing. Using the EC2 console, select the instance and choose gate system logs to check for kernel panics, boot errors or out of memory errors. To review the performance monitoring, select the instance from EC2 console and review CPU usage, network statistics under the monitoring tab. Currently the CPU usage is very much nominal and there is no red flags. We can check network statistics, which is again within the healthy limits and network out. So network in and network out statistics, both are within the healthy limits. Under the storage tab, choose the volume hosting the website data and review the Amazon Elastic block storage metrics under the monitoring tab. So as you can see under the monitoring tab, you can see various metrics for Elastic block volume. And as you can see the read bandwidth, write bandwidth, the read throughput, the write throughput, the average queue length and the burst balance, all the metrics are within the healthy limit. Make sure that the instance associated security group and network ACLs allow traffic on port 80 and 443. So as you can see under the security groups, port 80 and port 443 are open to world. We can also check the network ACLs under the networking tab, open the VPC ID, click on your VPC, click on your network ACL associated with EC2 instance. And you can see the inbound traffic is allowing all the traffic on the EC2 instance. And outbound traffic is also allowing all the traffic out of EC2 instance. Make sure that the route table in the instance subnet has default route to the internet. So as you can see, the route table in instance subnet has default route to the internet. Make sure that the instance has an elastic IP address assigned to it. If you stop and start your instance, the elastic IP address remains associated with the instance. Make sure to map your elastic IP address to the domain name. To verify if the HTTP service and OS level firewall connect to the instance and then use the following SSH command. So click on connect, copy the SSH command, go to your terminal window. As you can see, the HTTP service is in stop state. If the HTTP service is in inactive or stop state, then restart the service using the following command. When the HTTP service is restarted, confirm its status using the following command. As you can see, the HTTP service is in running state. Confirm that traffic is received on port 80 and 443 by running the following command. As you can see, HTTP service is listening on port 80 and ready to receive the traffic. Verify the status of OS level firewall. If the firewall is active, either stop it or allow port 80 and 443. You can review the status of firewall using following command. As you can see, the firewall is in running state. 
If the firewall service is running, allow HTTP and HTTPS using the following commands. On Ubuntu or Debian system, use the following command. As you can see, the firewall status is in active state. If UFW is running on Ubuntu instance, then allow HTTP and HTTPS using the following command. Finally, review the error and access log under where log httpd. As you can see, there are two files created by name error log and access log for capturing the errors and the access pattern to your website. As you can see, the website is up and running. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.